Hey folks, welcome to Allie's Toast Kitchen today. We are making some fudgy avocado brownies. I saw this recipe on Pinterest and I said, yup, I want to try that out. And it's from Frugal Mom, eh? I don't think she's Canadian. I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know where you would get that idea, but I love Canada. They're my favorite group of people ever in the whole world. So this is not my kitchen, not my recipe, but it is a test kitchen today because I've never made any type of sweet thing with avocado. If you can see, we're ready to go. I got avocado here. I got avocado over there. So let's go ahead and get started. shopping and this bag is totally empty we're gonna do it a little bit differently today I like it as decor <laughs> we are making a Thanksgiving dessert you can share with family and friends when you're all giving thanks on Thanksgiving and thanking each other for being there so I kind of had to recalculate some things when I saw this recipe first of all she uses maple syrup um, I do not because I'm keto and I keep it really low carb also she was using um, coconut flour I like to stay away from flowers I don't like flour replacements I don't eat replacement bread I'll eat sweet treats that don't have flour in them but I just I'm not a replacement flour person I don't like nut flours so we're gonna replace the flour with some coconut flakes because I do like me some unsweetened coconut flakes you just you gotta say it that way every time every time so on my high-tech notepad here which is a paper towel we have 300 grams of chocolate chips these are the lilies and they're like one net gram of carb yeah per serving which is 14 grams and that's actually a lot I can eat a lot of these in a night and still be way under on my carbs and calories Actually, this has been my new favorite dessert. I've been doing the Quest Bars, which I still do sometimes, but this, I can just like savor this in my mouth and let it melt all night. Uh -uh. So if you haven't tried the Lily's chips, they're really nice to snack on after a meal and you should try them out. Now the recipe said to get two to four avocados. Um, and so of course the bags only sold three avocados and the loose avocados weren't ripe yet. So I did end up with an entire bag of avocado that I'm not going to use for this recipe, but we did blend up one and a half avocado. I ate the other half and it was real good. It's one of my favorite snacks. And then one avocado. So this is for the frosting, the singular avocado, and this is for the actual brownie, uh, the one and a half avocado. You got to say it like that too. So because Frugal Mom A's recipe called for maple syrup, I mean, what else? You can't blame the lady. She lives in Canada, supposedly. Who knows? So I'm going to replace it with some swerve. I want to use this throughout the rest of the holiday season just to kind of get rid of it. I've never used it before, but I used it in my first Thanksgiving video and it worked out pretty well. I'm not going to measure this out yet. I'm just going to kind of taste, I think, as I go because I'm not sure what one half a cup of maple syrup would come in to swerve. Eh. I don't know what it is with all these recent recipes I've been doing, but they all want their eggs room temperature. So I've been giving them water baths. So we got three eggs soaking at room temperature. Why? Why do they have to be room temperature? I don't, I don't know. We've got half a cup of unsweetened coconut powder, which came out to 50 grams because you guys know I'm crazy. And then we also have half a cup of the coconut flakes that came out to 28 grams. Now, if you ever wonder how come coconut flakes are so caloric, just remember it. Those were 28 grams. This was 50. These are all fat. You know how fat floats? It's all fat, baby. It's just all, it's all flat. Fat. <laughs> baby. Her recipe called for two tablespoons of coconut oil, but I forgot to bring it to my mom's. So we're using some butter, salted. I don't really buy unsalted. I'm never going to use unsalted unless a recipe calls for unsalted. And I just use salted anyway, and it always works out. So just do what you want to do. Okay, now, oh my gosh, the first thing you're going to want to do is set your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I remembered. So the first thing we should do is blend up this avocado so that it becomes a puree. Now we want one cup of final puree for the actual brownie bits and pieces, pan, whatever. Now I was going to blend them separately, but I'm just going to put it all together and measure out one cup for the brownies and then just use the rest for the frosting. That's the plan. We'll see what happens. Okay, that looks pretty well pureed, like a guacamole. Now somebody please tell me, when would I use these different beaters? This one's a flat one, and this one's like a skinny one. Tell me please. You gotta lick the beater every time, every time. I almost forgot to measure in grams, cause I'm a mad woman. So we want a full cup of avocado puree. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to blend some more avocado. So I will need to use that bag. I'm so excited. Okay, our avocado is ready to go. And so, oh wow, that's vibrant. 
The first thing we need to do to actually make the brownie is to melt the chocolate and the butter. I'm gonna use the double boiler method. Yeah, does, do I really think it's necessary? No, but if you've seen me cook before, you know it doesn't always work out, okay? And people tell me what to do and I still don't wanna do it, but I'm gonna listen to y'all this time. Oh no, it's not gonna fit. That'll be fine. No pressure. It's just like cooking over the ice saw run over here. Oh good. We're already melting. We're melting up. All right. Is this so necessary? Is it though? Oh my God. This is dangerous. I could have probably just heated it up in the microwave. Oh no, the butter. Okay. So I definitely would have added the butter first because the chocolate like coated the inside of the pan. And so the, the butter couldn't touch the hot side of the pan. So it's just kind of like swimming around in this medium lukewarm chocolate kind of thing going on. Okay, folks, it seems we are all melted. I'm facing the opposite of the light. Okay, so while my chocolate melted chips over there are cooling off a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and mix the frosting with the rest of the avocado. So I need three tablespoons of cocoa powder and three tablespoons of maple syrup, AKA the swerve. I don't know how three tablespoons of cocoa powder is gonna turn this into chocolate frosting because this is a lot. I mean, I got a lot of, you know, avocado. And it's still a little chunky, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. Now, since I've already measured out my cocoa and grams for the total, I'm just gonna be have a rough estimate for what a tablespoon is using a non-measuring tablespoon, just like a, like a dinner spoon. So, okay, there's three. Oh, that might actually do it pretty well. Now, okay, this is the hard part. How much swerve to put? The original recipe said three tablespoons of maple, so I'm gonna go with three tablespoons of swerve. This will be a rougher estimate, but I'm actually gonna measure it out just so you guys can recreate this at home. All right, so we use 30 grams of swerve, 29 to 30. Now we mix again. I keep licking my beaters. I'm losing avocado. Scraping down the sponge. I think I need more swerve. I, I can still taste the avocado. Well, 20 grams, well, 18, whatever. I might actually add more cocoa powder too. Okay. I know, that ain't bad. All right, I'm gonna lick my beaters and let it be. Now for the actual brownie mixture, we're going to add our one cup that was saved of the puree. I'm tired. It was a long day. I'm gonna lick you too. I'm licking everything. Huh. Okay, so we're gonna blend this first and then we start adding in the eggs one at a time. I just need to taste this before I add in the egg, just to know. I just need to know what it tastes like. It needs more sugar. Now again, we're adding the swerve. Now this is already sweetened because the lilies are sweetened. So I'm gonna do three at first. So we're at 25 grams of the swerve. See, that's pretty good. But I'm gonna add in some volume with the eggs and the coconut. I think I'm gonna add one more tablespoon just to make sure. So we have used a total of 35 grams of swerve for the actual brownie mixture. All right, so one egg at a time. Did y'all see those crazy mad skills when I had like a broken egg and a non-broken egg and I got the broken egg into here without using two hands? That was pretty cool, you have to admit. Who's an amateur now, huh? Okay, now this has actually gotten pretty thick. It's not like a runny batter consistency at all. Okay, I'm a little skeptical. I still gotta add in some stuff. Oh gosh. We're gonna make it even drier with some cocoa nut flakes and some cocoa powder. Why not? Let's do it. I can't lick the spoon anymore because of the egg. What am I gonna do? Dust ball. Oh god. Yeah, this is so thick. Oh my goodness. I'm supposed to use some parchment paper. How's that gonna work? It said to allow for overhang, but oh lord. All right, let's just give it a go. I'm following the recipe as best I can. I feel like this is not working out. I feel like this has been a disaster. It's a good thing that this is a test kitchen because if I felt like I was supposed to do really, really well at this, I'd be lying. Oh, it's not gonna fill up the paint. I got this much left. It ain't gonna fill it. Oh, uh, what am I going to do? I need a smaller dish. That's what I need. Oh no. This ain't working out. I should have just buttered the pan. I'm a little angry at you, Canadian mom. All right, we're going to do this Allie's way. 
We're gonna butter the pan. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes, Allie, you do. Oh, that's the wrong one. No, the raw egg. Yes, Allie, you do with it. You're making it work. I wonder if I had added like some melted butter instead of uh, just the confectioner's sugar swerve, whatever, to replace the maple syrup. But I mean, maple syrup's really thick. Would it have made this any <laughs> less stiff? I don't know. Y'all tell me. Because apparently I'm the amateur. It, it really, uh, well, you see what that looks like, right? <laughs> All right, it's kind of like a mound on top, so now I'm trying to even it out so it's more flat towards the edges. All right, y'all, we are going to go into the oven. I got to see if it's supposed to be covered or not, so <laughs> um, I got to check that. Nope, my Canadian friend said nothing about covering it, but it did say to pour the batter <laughs> into the pan. I had to like dig it out, but whatever. So we're going into the oven at 400 because my oven is well preheated for about 12 to 15 minutes. And now it's time for everybody's favorite segment. It's Zen Dishes with Allie. So that's, in my opinion, the secret to happiness. This is what happens when you try and impress people on the internet. You ruin your dress. Okay, I think it's cooked. It's been in there for about 18 minutes. Um, the oven keeps beeping at me, but I was doing dishes. And it looks firm to the touch on the top, and that's what... Okay, I'm coming! Now, I'm sure you're supposed to let this cool, but guess what? I got stuff to do, and I'm tired. So we're going to go ahead and frost it with our avocado frosting. It smells actually pretty good. I'm actually surprised. Um, so we'll see what kind of disaster this is today. <laughs> Scoot your boot. That's what she looks like, folks. Should I take a picture? Hmm. Now, see, this is why I wanted a picture beforehand. This, this looks a little lumpy, so we're just gonna hope for the best. Story of my life. I don't know what to expect. I'm a little worried. You can see the avocado chunks. Oh no, it's a chunk of avocado. Uh, I mean, I blended as much as I could, or I mixed and mixed and mixed some more. My mom is not a fan of keto sweets. She just doesn't like the taste of artificial sweeteners. I am so used to it. I love it. Give me all the artificial sweeteners in the world. But she does love my savory cooking. So my last video with the cauliflower, um, definitely make that. She loved that. So your whole family will love it because she's kind of a picky eater. And if my mom liked it, your kids, husband, wife, whoever will like it too. Now I kind of got a mound. That's okay. I don't mind a mound on top of the freaking brownie. Oh, I don't, I don't know about that frosting now. I just licked the spoon. Maybe it'll all taste better once I eat like an actual bite. Okay, here we go. Got my pretty dish. Got my stabby thing. Stabby spatchily. Stabby spatchy. Stabby spatchy. Huh. Aren't brownies usually square? Yes. I was thinking maybe instead of the coconut flour, I could have used zucchini, kind of like a zucchini bread, since that would have added a little bit more moisture, I'm sure. Well, folks, this may or may not be my worst video. <laughs> it's time for the taste test, so let's just get this over with. I ruined my dress. I mean, come on. All right, so, I mean, it looks good. I'm gonna, you know, show you guys. It looks um, gooey and it's warm like the plates warm that's also why I didn't wait to put on the topping was because I want a hot brownie that's you know that's how it's supposed to be I was gonna I was thinking of doing like a mascarpone um, what do you call it Mississippi mud type situation but I just wanted to follow the recipe all right well here we go anyway I have mixed emotions it's really good if you want your dessert to have a hint of vegetable. Let's put it that way. It's super gooey. It just, it tastes green. It has a green flavor to it. I mean, I'm going to finish this piece. You know? <laughs> the texture is really nice on the brownie part. I'm going to actually scoop off some of this topping because that's where I'm tasting a lot of the avocado. So, ooh, steaming. We're steaming. Okay. The brownie on its own, really good. Really good on its own. But this frosting, I knew the minute I tried it when I first mixed it, that it wasn't my favorite. I would make a mascarpone, mascarpone, mascarpone. I would make a mascarpone, um, like cream topping, kind of like I did for my pavlova. Maybe not as like lava-y. Oh, yeah, the brownie on its own, guys, is super good. Yeah, just scrape off the 
topping. I don't even want that. I'm going to just scrape it off the rest of that and take this home with me. Yeah. Now that I'm just eating the brownie, it's super good. Not, not the topping. Nope. Not my favorite. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I'm thirsty. Yeah, actually, the more I was eating that brownie, the more it just tasted like a good brownie. So make the brownie part. Forget the topping. If you want to top it, use something else like a cream cheese fluff or a mascarpone, a creamy thing. I was thinking of adding walnuts to it, but it's pretty good. The brownie itself on its own. I actually might make that again just without the topping. I mean, it is a really nice consistency for the actual brownie. It holds up, right? It's like you can slice it. Oh, good. Well, folks, that is about it for tonight. Um, it's a little bit late. Do give the actual brownie base a try. My frugal mom, A, had it right on the base. So give her a try. She's Canadian. Gotta love a Canadian. You know, they can do no wrong. <laughs> I love Canada. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That would help me out so much. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, I will link all of that down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Allie. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.